welcome to this part of the tutorial. In this part, we are, we want to use the progressive cavity pump to artificially lift oil from an oil reservoir. So we want to model the oil reservoir. This part of the modeling of a naturally flowing well, which we want to do before we actually use the PCP to artificially lift. This part has been covered in the part two of this tutorial. So if you want to model a naturally flowing well, you can actually reference. Um, you have to go and watch the part two of this tutorial, or you just follow what I'm doing. But I'll be very fast. So if you need a step by step tutorial on this, you have to watch the part two of this tutorial. Thank you. Okay. So I'll be very fast in what I'm going to do here. The, the PVT parameters, the input parameters, just um, our GOR is 100. Our all gravity is um, actually low 13, our gas gravity is at 0.67, and our water salinity is at 100,000 ppm. There are no impurities, and we do not have data to match this model, so we'll just make it as simple as possible. Um, We have this and this, and then now uh, the model is actually at 4000, so it's um, very close to the surface, not too deep. And then we have just a tubing, and then the tubing is at 4000, and then it's, it has a depth of a uh, uh, instant diameter of 2.89. Sorry. Okay, no, and that's that. Uh, we are these, and then the temperature is 60, and a depth of 4000. The temperature, oh, excuse me, the temperature is at 160, and then the overall e transfer coefficient is 8. Okay, and we're done. Now, for our reservoir model we have it at a pressure a pressure of a model it's actually low uh, we have it at the pre pressure of a model is at uh, 1500 and then the water cut is at zero and then we want to use the desi or entrance skin by hand so we have a permeability of 150 a thickness of 100 and drainage area of 340, the shear factor of 31.6, over the of 3.354. So we calculate this. Okay, sorry. Our geometric skin, it's okay. The geometric skin, as I mentioned, the skin is zero. So we're plotting this, and this is what we have. The open flow potential is actually very low. Formation PI2, it's actually very low okay but that's um that's what we have there okay you're done with this and we have to go and look at this model and see what's happening uh top node pressure is 100 <coughs> let's see if there's any production from this as well nothing 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 okay well, so there is no production in the model okay so that is what we are now <coughs> so we want to use the PCP so we're changing the artificial lift meter to progressive cavity pump and then using this so we're using the circuit right now now in order to use this you have to update your equipment, your downhole equipment record. You have to specify the tubing inside diameter. And then the inside diameter is 3.5. And our casing, our inside diameter is 8.3. Okay. So with that, we're, we're done. We've updated that. Another thing you have to do is you have to design your pump. So you have to design this PCP. So we are adding a new record. A manufacturer is our, we've got an information from the manufacturer and the manufacturer is Mars. And then the pump series is a, uh, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, 
but don't let me see. Okay, the pump size is 24 inches. The head is 400. Uh, or okay, sorry, the head is 4,430 feet. The reference speed is um 2,500. The reference rate is at. 2,534 STP. Pump volume is 34 cubic inches. The pump length, yeah. The pump length is at 28.5433 feet, and then the starter pitch is at 15. Point Two seven five six. Uh, the diameter is one point four nine six zero six. The rotor element of what? <coughs> okay, the hydraulic, the edge, and then the other information. So we have the performance chart data. We have that at four 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 three zero feet. That the flow rate, which we have, is two one five two. And then um, the required speed is 500. And then the shaft power is up on one zero. So well, uh, we also have another one that at 3,000 feet. And the production is two three four two. And then the speed is constant, but the shaft power is reducing. Then at 1,500, the rate is increasing the power the speed is constant and then the shaft power is also reducing so so we can actually plot this and check our okay so this is how it looks like performance chart okay let's update this information the series name is uh let's call it um and tb1354 okay so we are done with that so we have succeeded in adding our, our pump so okay so we also need to design our soccer rod so let's add one thing so we do not have the manufacturer is um it's still morris then the rod name is Okay, Maris Rod 5. Okay, the rod inside diameter is a. Uh, it's one. The outside diameter is 1.5. Then the density is 16. Okay, the Young's modulus is a. Um, Thirty million four hundred fifty seven thousand nine hundred twenty six psi, and then the thermal expansion is actually seven point seven eight. Yeah, oh, okay, that's seven point seven eight exponential zero six. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so there is an error saying that the Young's modulus uh, is um too large. Okay, we can actually fix this. We're just coming here to unit and changing some certain things we need to come locate the young's modulus uh where are you okay pick your r y young's modulus w x y young's modulus so we need to change the maximum value and then this is about three six one fifty okay fifteen so while we're having 30 let's increase it to 100 okay so once you save this and then uh you're gonna go you can actually go and then redesign our pump 
Okay, so the pump is good, so we can redesign this. Uh, like I said, the manufacturer is on. Morris, and then the right name is Morris Road 5. Okay, and then the diameter in this one, and this is 6, um, 1.6, and this is 16. And then, okay, so when we're done, there's no error again. So we are done designing our pump. Now what we need to do is to design our ESP. Our, sorry, not ESP, PCP, Progressive Cavity Pump. Now we are told that uh, at the depth of the pump is at 3,500, the maximum outer diameter is um, 7, our separator is 0, and design rate is at um, 2,500. Remember our maximum uh, rate it's actually at 2,535 SP per day, so you have to design at a rate uh, lower than that. So, our water cut we're told has increased to 80 percent. Wow, I'm serious. Total GR is 100, and our total pressure is 100. You know, total rod length is also at that. So, we can uh, calculate for this, and then now uh, it's done. Rate is higher than absolute. Okay, choose a lower rate. Okay. It's okay. Yeah, the design rate is actually the, oh, let's reduce that to rate to five hundred. What was actually our absolute pump flow potential? We are going to check. Okay, it's still higher than that. I'm sure it will not be as low as this. Okay, let's calculate. So, mm, that's good. Okay. I should be done. Let's check something here. What was a absolute open flow potential? Oh, 121 STB per day. Oh, that's quite unfortunate. Now let's update this record to reflect what we're doing there and then recalculate. 151, okay. So our water cut is actually 80. So that's to reflect actually what we are doing here. So that is what we have here so after we've done the calculation let's confirm that again okay so the next thing we have to do is we have to design this so let's look at the pump just the pump we finished designing that's what we have in our database so that is that and then uh, so you're done with that so those are the things you need to do once you're done with that that should be good so let's go and check actually what's happening so let's look at the information here once again it told the pump speed is 53 okay so that's that so we'll conduct sensitivity analysis on that but first let's check what's happening to the system so let's just continue this way and calculate okay so we'll discover that it's actually producing so our absolute pump flow potential was um, 100 and then we're producing at 74 that's actually very good okay so that is that so we can also conduct sensitivity analysis to check pump speed what if the pump speed is it reduces we are using uh, the speed we are using is 58 what if it's um, let's say from 20 30 40 50 Maybe it increases to 60, 70, perhaps to 80. What will happen? So let's just use that and then calculate and see what's happening. Okay, it's done. Now at a speed of 20, there's production 22. Speed of 30, there's production 40, 50. There is production and it's increasing with increasing speed. At speed of 60, there's production. Speed of 70, there's production. At speed of 80, there's production. Okay. So it's um it's been noticed that with increase in speed there is increase in production so you can actually visualize that here so as the speed increases so production also increases so okay that's what we have that's how to use our a progressive cavity pump to artificially lift oil from uh, oil reservoir that is that um the production is actually low because my open flow potential is uh, is also low so if you have um, a model in which you have a higher open flow potential and all others 
you see our GOR is actually very low to GOR is 100 and then the reservoir pressure is also very low so you have to that is why our production is low now if you have a model in which all these things are high you have um, the pressure is high and other things but the well is still not flowing then you know that if you apply PCP it should optimize it should um, be able to artificially lift the oil at a higher rate that um, is attainable even when the well is flowing but it is not giving you at the rate you want you can also use PCP to increase the rate of production okay so that is just the basics of how to use a progressive cavity pump to artificially lift oil from oil well and thank you very much for watching don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe for more videos then don't forget to comment if there are things you need us to add if the problems you've encountered the questions and all that thank you very much for subscribing thank you for watching our tutorial thank you